I'm coming to the stage. Oh, uh, he, he had some nice shoes until he figured out to wear sneakers. Eric Simons, come on up. There you go. Oh, he's wearing nice shoes. He's wearing nice shoes again. Eric. For the shoe compliments, always. Thank you very much. You know, I was worried I would be overwhelmed by the crowd here, so to help calm me down, I asked them to paint me an assortment of landscapes. And they, they did a great job here. Uh, so yeah, if I just get overwhelmed, we'll just turn, kind of gaze at these. I just have to remember to turn this way and not towards the creepy hand, otherwise I'll be like, ah! <laughs> so I was a fat kid. <laughs> and uh, when you're a fat kid and you love food, that was my problem, I was just obsessed with food. I still am obsessed with food to this day. But when you're a fat kid obsessed with food, it gets you into some uncomfortable situations. When I was in the sixth grade and I would stand in the lunch line, every once in a while there would be this kid, Larry, that would stand next to me. And Larry could make fun of me without having to say a word. And that's when you know it's bad when you're a fat kid. What he would do is he would just stand there and just poke <laughs> the fat on my body. And yeah, I, of course, you know, it's something I, I hated. And he would do it like he was mystified by it. Like he was in awe of it. Like I was some undiscovered manatee-like creature that had just washed ashore. <laughs> I was like, what is this blubberous beast before me? And he would particularly target my man boobs. And the way he would do it is he would prod me and then he would make this face of just complete and utter disbelief. He'd do it just like this. <laughs> just stunned silence by my boobies. And yeah, I hated this. I didn't know what to do in that situation though. I knew the easy solution is to remove yourself from the situation, to walk away. But as I said, I loved food. So that was difficult for me because that meant losing my space in the lunch line. <laughs> so just so I could eat a little sooner, I stood there and endured Larry poking my fat tits. <laughs> that is the grip that square public school pizza had over me. <laughs> you remember square public school pizza? Pizza the exact shape, thickness, and texture of a carpet sample? <laughs> but I loved it. And I didn't know what I could do in that situation. If I were to fight Larry, I'd get sent down, the, down to the principal's office. I'd miss lunch entirely. <laughs> if I were to tell on him, every middle schooler knows that's not a good look. You don't tell on people. And plus, I was such a dorky kid, had a high-pitched voice. I could just imagine how that would have turned out, me storming into the principal's office. Excuse me, principal. Larry has flicked my tit, <laughs> slapped my gut, and generally abused my body. That is why he deserves, deserves a detention. The principal would be like, get this fatty out of here. <laughs> They'd lure me away with a piece of pizza. <laughs> but it's funny how things change over time. Now I'm so touch starved, I would love for a stranger to play with my jugs. <laughs> I told a girlfriend one time about my period as a fat kid. She goes, Eric, I think you internalized some trauma during that time. I was like, no, nah, I think I internalized a lot of ice cream cake. <laughs> Still to this day, I'm weird about food. I had a friend invite me to see his band perform a couple weeks ago. I drive up there, and it's just at some regular house in the burbs. I go inside, fully decorated home. The person inside asked me to pay $10 to see the bands. So I pay the $10, see my friend, and I say, are you getting a cut of this money? He says, no, none of the bands are. And that rubs me the wrong way. Because if you're going to throw a party, you don't make it a money-making endeavor. And if it is a money-making endeavor, you pay the performers. So I said, I'm going to make this right the only way I know how. I'm going to eat all the food in their fridge. <laughs> so I went back into the kitchen got in their fridge and started eating all the leftovers inside. I was slamming leftover pizza, ice cream bars, started handing them out to people like I was Robin Hood. <laughs> I remember at one point I turned to one guy and I was like, hey, it's cool. They said their casa is our casa. <laughs> and on, on that topic, let's try some of this casadilla I found. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> and finally, I just want to say, when I first performed this joke, I had bullet points, or when I first performed this entire set, I had bullet points written out 
of all the different topics I wanted to talk about, all on a little post-it note, all in bullet points. So it was like fat kid, poke tits, $10 party, uh, s steal food. But I lost that note card somewhere in the day. <laughs> so I think somebody found it and was just like, what kind of to-do list is this? <laughs> That's my time, everybody. Give it up for Eric Simons. I'm going to tell you something about Eric. Uh, Eric was a finalist at Crackpot's comedy competition. So he's going to go on to compete and, uh, for a spot, for a paid spot for, with, a, with, a, with an actual pro. He gets to open for him, so give it up for Eric Simons. You'll be seeing him. Good job. <laughs>